Oh, I think the reason to be passionate about data sharing and replication is because of the impact it can have. So it's really terrific that we each individually get to work on uh, scholarship and invent new things and come up with discoveries that you know no one's ever known before in the history of the world, no matter how small they are. Uh, it feels really great. Uh, however, if you can actually change the infrastructure and change the norms, then you can have an impact on many, many more people. Uh, and, and collectively, we can do way better than any one of us can individually. One purpose is, is a sort of sanity check, a basic, can we, can we reproduce this? Can we see what you did? Um, transparency around that, transparency and replication under, around that particular experiment. Another is more generally, for science to move forward, you need all of the evidence. Uh, data sharing always produces better quality data for, for my projects. Just the process of having to be rigorous and sufficiently well documented in creating a, an archive data set. That means I've got better data sets, um, better documentation. It might all be the same data, but um, it, it's, it's, it's better for this project now. Um, the second thing is I hope it'll help productivity. <laughs> I hope by handing off this data set to Dr. Einstein's lab that this graph they will draw now will actually get into the public use, be published as a paper, maybe we'll get a Nobel Prize, but fundamentally these data will see the light of day and we'll hence have better productivity from this, from this study. Um, um, and then, then the third thing is, is you know, kind of a, a more general hope that um, by archiving the data that um, in the future there will be some, not just for this project, but some larger purpose served by having open access. And sometimes that might be intangible, such as the public who fund our research and participate in our studies might have greater faith in research and the process of research. They might be less suspicious about what the government's doing with its research money or what professors do in new in, 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 in laboratories and, and so forth. When people talk about um, open access to data, they often still are talking about the article about the, the researcher that points to the data. But um, I think that we're also getting a sense that the, the, the nature of um, the research practice itself is changing and that there's an expectation to share the data, not only here's my article about what I did. So I think it's part of that whole trend. We are moving from things like uh, phone surveys where we call people up and ask them um, how much they like Hillary Clinton um, and you know, get fewer and fewer responses on the phones to looking at things that people say through blogs, through tweets, through Facebook and analyzing their sentiments, their behavior uh, and it seems that to me that we have a tremendous potential to use this information to understand humans, human behavior, and human institutions. But we also have a tremendous responsibility to make sure that that evidence base is available, not just to people who are working at Facebook, not just to people who are like, we're friends with the, the uh, vice presidents at Twitter, but but to the research community, to uh, and and to the public as at large, so that they understand how what we're learning, how it applies um, to their um, their political institutions, their social institutions, and that that evidence will be available long into the future because uh, we're just developing ways of understanding it now. So there's a lot to learn. Uh, most researchers have to make some form of impact in their field, otherwise nobody recognizes the worth of their research. So they can make an impact by either having their data become the basis for future research, so somebody else's research will depend upon your observations. For that to happen, you have to share your observations or publish them so other people can then 
do the next generation of research. What science is, is the community of people acting in cooperation and competition in pr pursuit of the same goals. When you have a community of people doing that, then we can learn things that any one of us couldn't possibly learn. So that's really what science is. That is what accounts for most of the progress in society over the last several hundred years. And that's what we want to contribute to. So in that sense, it is like a village. It is like a community. And being belonging to a community means that you need to give your share to that particular community. And data is the, the, the coin of the realm. And if you can share that with other people, other people will share the data with you and everybody will be better for that.